Hi, and welcome to a Level Director X Tips and Tricks video. Uh, since its release in March, many users have asked similar questions, so I felt a video covering some of these topics would be very useful. I'm just using the, uh, the asset demo um, for this example. And I'm going to start off in preferences. Quite a few people a little bit unsure to um, to what these options down here do. So auto select draw asset tool when an asset is selected. Okay, this simply means when checked, if I select an asset, for instance, select this grass, the asset draw tool up here is automatically selected. And as you can see, I will now start drawing this um, this sort of grass image onto the canvas. Okay, by pressing S, it deselects it, or I could have just clicked the uh, the select tool up here. So if I go back to preferences and deselect that, now when I go to select an asset, it doesn't automatically select the draw tool. So now I have to actually go to the option, click it, or select A, and now I can draw. So it's just uh, for convenience if you want to automatically draw the assets that you've selected. Okay, the next one is an interesting one. This catches uh, a few users out. Okay, restrict selection to current layer. Okay, occasionally users, uh, they contact me and say, look, you know, I can't uh, seem to select my, um, my object. So, for instance here, look, I'm trying to select my dog and it's not working. Well, with that option selected in preferences, because if you see over here with the layers, is that the background is active. And with restrict um, set, is that I can only select objects within that layer. So it's only going to allow me to select the sky. So if I want to select the dog, I actually have to go to the layer where the dog actually resides. And now that layer is active. As you can see there in brackets, I can now select the dog. Okay. And obviously, if you uncheck that, it means you can select any object, any layer, which uh, might be useful for some people, but on some big levels, sometimes that can get, get in the way because obviously as objects overlap each other, is that you might you know, want to select an object, but if there's another object in front, is that you're obviously going to select the object in front. So, um, so just be mindful of that, which is why generally this is uh, this is preferred. Okay, theme. Uh, it's very straightforward. Uh, just general themes. But some people have asked, oh, you know, uh, the themes are okay, but you know, I'd like to customize it. Uh, you can do that if you actually go into the installation directory for Level Director X. There's actually a folder called Themes and the themes are based on style sheets. So you can either just create your own theme um, and copy it into the same folder. If you do that, it will actually pop up in here and obviously you can just customize the, uh, the CSS. Target devices. A um, few people have asked about this. Okay, this is just the target device that um, you want your your game uh, to target. So, and generally this will be, you know, your um, in terms of sort of resolution, your sort of one times image. So, because obviously, like with a Corona, you can do sort of two times, four times, based on the different sort of resolutions. But generally, what you would do is you, you choose the target which is for your one times image. So your kind of you know standard size. Uh, there's a you know quite a comprehensive list here, but if you want to, you can actually add add your own. Then once you've done that, as you can see here now, if I actually click onto the um, the level, go to the properties, you can see that for this level, the target is iPhone 4 landscape, and as you can see, this like the yellow border around here that is showing you the target size. If I turn off the grid, 
you can see it disappears. So if I was to change the target, so now I want to uh, target iPhone 5, you can see now, so that's portrait, if I do landscape, is now it's extended the border. And it's just a visual indicator to say, okay, that, that is the size of the uh, target device. Okay, so that's kind of preferences, uh, just a quick overview there. Okay, the next thing I want to show you is the, um, the snapping. Uh, this sort of catches uh, a few people out. Uh, and this is where you draw polygons. So let's do it on the main canvas because it's a little bit easier to, uh, to see. So I select a polygon. As you can see, as I start drawing, it's snapping to the grid because I have the grid snap enabled. But if I hold down the control key, and I'm using Windows here, it now like it does sort of pixel movement. And again, if I release the control key, it snaps again. Okay, that's quite straightforward when you're drawn onto the canvas. But the complication is, or what catches people out, is in the collision window, because this also honors the grid snap. But because it's kind of zoomed in to like one area, um, people find it difficult to actually sort of draw the uh, the polygon. So, for instance, if I was to uh, um, let's get rid of that, as you can see, as I'm moving around, it's like, oh, what's, what's happening? Because it's I can't actually seem to draw a polygon, and it's because it's snapping. So there's two choices: you can either turn off. The uh, snap to grid at the top here, and now suddenly I've got smooth movement. Or if I switch it back on again and hold down the control key, again I've got that um, fine movement, and then I can actually draw the polygon. Didn't draw that very well, but then again, when I edit the points, the same thing happens. Uh, if I try and move a point, it's just not quite working because it's trying to snap to a nearest point. Whereas if I hold down the control key, you kind of get that fine movement. So that's worth um, worth noting. Okay, next topic is external assets. Uh, really useful feature, not quite understood by everybody yet, but hopefully after this, yeah, you'll all be using it. So an external asset is where you want to share an asset across multiple levels. So for instance, I had this bird here and you can see I've got animation set up. And also, as you've just seen, it has physics, okay, which is great. But now if I was to create, you know, level two and I wanted to reuse that bird, I would have to, you know, uh, add the bird assets and I'd have to configure the animations and, and the polygons etc all, all over again but I don't want to do that because I've already done it so what I can do down here there's the export assets as so by doing that you can just select a folder and it's sort of defaulted to the ASX extension which basically means it's uh, an external asset so if I were to save that, you see now it's changed this little icon here, this kind of up arrow thing, and basically now that's indicating that this asset, or these assets, are external. And now you notice that if I try and go into animations or physics, it's actually locked out because it's saying that now this is shared across multiple levels, is that it's kind of locked down. So if I was to create another level, keep it, uh, okay, I've got a blank level. Let's um, call it level two. Got no assets, but I want to reuse that bird asset in this level. So here you can either create add assets, which is like brand new assets that you're bringing in, 
or I can add an exported asset. So I'll be doing that. Now I need to find the folder where it's stored. It's in examples, assets. And now you can see it's got bird ASX. Now if I open that, now you can see it's imported that bird. These are locked out, but as you can see with those little uh, visual indicators there, it's got animations and it has physics. So now I can just drag that on. And if I go to the layers and then highlight the, um, where is it? Uh, sorry, the layer, show bodies, as you can see, it's imported the physics as well. So now it's sharing the asset between the two levels. But now you think, well, actually, it's great, but I, I do need to make a change to it. So to make a modification, you have to import the asset. So now I've imported it. So now it's imported it, and it's now just local to this project. So it's kind of no longer shared. But at least now I can actually make a change. Okay. So, for instance, this polygon, you might want to sort of change it slightly. Um, let's just make a small change. Something like that. And now you want to share that across the projects. So all you need to do is, is export it again. Export it to the same file, save, replace. Okay, and now that um, bird has been exported. It's locked out again. But if I were to go to go to my project and now go jump back to level one, now we're back on this uh, this other level. We have to refresh the uh, the assets, and we can do that by there's this uh, little button here called reload assets and once you've done that the that shared asset or that exported external asset will now be reloaded and now you're sharing the same asset across uh, across all your levels so uh, a really uh, really useful feature so uh, recommend uh, you use that um, lastly for today I just want to mention about the uh, the pan mode uh, I think on the max it's uh, it's a little bit more intuitive because you can just use the, uh, uh, the 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 trackpad and it sort of pans automatically, which is really nice. But uh, even on Windows, if you use the middle uh, scroll wheel, then um, it kind of does the same thing. So here I've got this sort of bird asset uh, selected, but I actually want to place him at the other side of the level. But obviously, you know, it's not scrolling automatically. I mean, I could just use the uh, the scroll bar, but alternatively, I can use the the middle scroll wheel. Which now, if I click, you can see it turns to like the pan, and now I can just move that across, however I like, and now I can just place the object. So, very useful feature uh, that uh, again, not everybody is aware of. So I think that uh, sort of concludes this this video. Just uh, a few little uh, tips and tricks to hopefully uh, yeah sort of get get you started. Okay, thanks uh, thanks for listening. Thank you. Bye.